Now, Professor P. L. Visheshwara was the instrumental in shaping the mass communication department in Telangana University. He is the brain behind that. And unfortunately, he could not become the vice chancellor, though his name was placed in the panel for twice. So that is our opportunity. If he would have become the vice chancellor of this university, it would be in different uh, shape. Thank you, Mr. I invite you. I am very happy to be here with my pleasant uh, privilege uh, that so many distinguished personalities are here in this university to participate in this major conference. Professor Nasiu, the registrar of this university, Mr. Allam Narayana, Chairman Media Academy of Telangana and a very distinguished journalist and played an active role in Telangana moment. Rapol Ananda Bhaskar, a distinguished parliamentarian and a journalist and a writer. My colleague, Gunnar Usha Karan, director of uh, ICSR from Uthmani University, Dr. Srinivas, a very perceptive, one of our outstanding editors and journalists in this country. My colleague, you know, Professor Krishna Rao. There, there are several other people, Varun Kumar, and I'm also happy that Prabhupada Kumar, Raja Ram, Chandrasekhar, Shantabai, faculty and students. I'm very happy to be here. I know that we are totally behind schedule. I'm going to be talking about rights, Ambedkar. I don't want to violate any one of your rights for lunch. <laughs> we were supposed to complete this session around 11.30 and have another session, but I'm conscious of the time. I'm a professor. Some of my students are here. Normally when I get into the class, I am there lecture for one hour. These days I am lecturing for three hours when I get into the class. But I won't do that. I will just take about 10 or, two, 10 or 12 minutes to, to highlight you know, some of the issues. Several of my speakers have already highlighted the contribution of Ambedkar to this country, to society and particularly to journalism. I just want to take, you know, say one or two words. I, I don't think, you know, in my whatever reading I've done so far of several kinds of, you know, ideologues, several kinds of, you know, thinkers. To my mind, Ambedkar is one of the greatest thinkers this world has produced. When I, whenever I keep reading, in fact, last night again I was reading Ambedkar when I was preparing for this lecture. And the kind of a visionary he was, the kind of an insight he had an understanding of this country. I don't think you know, any other scholar had that kind of a, an understanding. When you look at Ambedkar, you know, he said, while well, present to the constitution, he said, Ambedkar vision, he said, you know, this country is going to be having political freedom. This country is going to be having one person, one value, one vote. But at the same time, you know, he said, in terms of contradiction of this country, we may have political equality, but we will not have social and economic equality in this country. He said the kind of injustice which was there in this country before the freedom, and the kind of injustice you know, which is continuing in this country continues to prevail. He said we may have political freedom, but we will not have economic freedom and social freedom, and the inequality which is there in this country continues to spread. I would like to give another quote. I'm quoting Ambedkar. He said, in this republic there is no place for democracy. Look at him. He said this. I'm quoting Ambedkar, my dear. I'm not quoting. In this republic there is no place for democracy. There is no room for equality. There is no room for liberty. And there is no room for fraternity. The Indian village is a very negation of republic. If it is a republic, it is a republic of the touchables by the touchables and for the touchables. He said if it is a republic, it's only for the republic of the touchables, by the touchables, of the touchables. And he further said, the untouchables have no rights. They are only to wait, serve and submit. He said this 70 years ago, more than 70 years ago, 80 years ago, still that is relevant. When he said, you know, India will go through economic 
and social contradictions and that's the reality today. And I said India will remain, it's only for the touchables, which is again a reality. In that kind of a context, when we look at, you know, the context of India. And I said, you know, Ambedkar, when I went to the London School of Economics, there's only one statue of, in London School of Economics, in front of the library, that is of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. He had two PhDs. He had two PhDs, one from Columbia University, another from London School of Economics. When he came back to India, at that point of time, you know, there is no person who was so qualified, who was an academic, he was a social scientist, a philosopher, a thinker. There is no person in this country at that point of time who could have written the constitution which Dr. B. R. Ambedkar gave. If there is any country in the world you know, which is having you know, the best constitution in the world, it is India. Unfortunately, that the spirit of constitutional morality, the spirit of constitutional values, the spirit of constitutional ethics, we violate every day. And I'm happy, all of you know, the whole country is referring to constitution every day. Whether students of technology, student of engineering, student of performing arts, theatre, everyone in the context of you know, what is happening in India, they are referring to constitution every day. And what are they referring to the constitution? In terms of the preamble of the constitution, the, pe the people of India, we are saying, we the people of India have solemnly resolved to constitute India as a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. Let me analyze. Many of us thinking, you know, that we have amended the Indian constitution that there is no socialism in India. We are a socialist country. But when we are a socialist country, one percent of India's population, one percent of richest of the rich people control, you know, seventy percent of economy, seventy percent of industry, seventy percent of resources of this country. All of you know, the data is coming out every day in the media. Who are the people who control? And then, you know, he said, we are a secular republic. I don't want to talk much about it. But today, what is happening in India? The kind of laws you know, which are being passed in India, totally against the spirit of secularism in India. And then, you know, he talked about, you know, democratic republic. I don't want to talk about it. Parliament records indicate 45% of the people, Rafael Vaskar, Vaskar, I'm sorry, he is, is, a, is a member of parliament. He knows much better than me. 45% of the people are sitting in Indian parliament and Indian legislature, unfortunately, have a, have, a, have a dubious record, rape record, extortion record, murder record, and other kinds of record. 45% of the people who are sitting in Indian parliament or for that matter, any other legislature in this country. And the rich of the rich, millionaires and millionaires are in Indian parliament. But what did Ambedkar talk about? He talked about, you know, to secure all its citizens, social, economic and political justice. He talked about social justice, economic justice and political justice. There is no political justice in India when you look at, you know, the representation which is there in Indian parliament. There is no social justice in India. 30% of the people in 2020, my dear friends, live below the poverty line in India. Forget about food. They do not have even access to portable drinking water, that is the reality. Don't go by World Bank statistics. Go by, you know, when you travel across the country, you will know 40% of them do not have. And according to leading economists of this country, many of them do not even get, you know, 50 to 60 rupees a day. Several studies have been done. Many of them who are in the unorganized sector. 80% of the Indian workforce is in the unorganized sector. They don't even get, you know, 50 or 60 rupees a day. After 72 years of democracy, 30% of the people in this country are totally illiterate. The definition of literacy itself is wrong in India. A person who can read his or her name, sign his or her name, and we are talking about technology. We are talking about social media, usage of, you know, internet and information technology. According to official statistics of the government of India, 30% of them are totally illiterate. According to me, if you go by modern definition of literacy, 60 to 70% of the people in this country 
are illiterate. Let me give one statistic. I think that's important for me to quote. When I collected the, even after seven, 72 years, India, which forms around one sixth of the world population, accounts for 50 percent of world illiterates. 50 percent of the world illiterates are in India. It is indigestible fact. This is my interpretation. That in India, which accounts to the largest youth segment, almost 40 percent of our boys and girls are under English. About 30 percent of our girls have not even entered into a school. About 80 percent of youth who are in the age group of 18 to 22 are not in colleges and universities. According to the government of India data, right now in 2020, only 22 percent of India's population in the 18 to 23 are in colleges and universities and the rest of them do not even have access to education. That is the same case. When you look at you know, many of the states, including Telangana, 70% of children drop out before they get into the 10th class. 82% of the girls drop out before they get into 10th class. This is the reality of this country. I have several kinds of statistics to give, but I do not want to talk about it. So in that kind of a context today, we are talking about you know, Ambedkar's contribution. When you are talking about you know, ideological journalism, my interpretation is there is an enormous amount of ideology in the, in the constitution. If only we implement what is mentioned in the constitution, look at you know, our fundamental rights, fundamental rights. Today we are in a position to talk here because we have freedom of speech and expression. That freedom is being stifled. That freedom is being completely marginalized in the country. Several of them do not have the right to hold or to, 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 to have a demonstration or to, or, or to participate in a rally all over the country. All over the country. There are several people who are sitting in the dark, they know much better than me of what is happening. Then in that kind of a context, you know, when you look at our director principles of state policy, our director principles of state policy very clearly say, Every person who is in the age group of 16, 6 to 14 should get compulsory quality education. Are we doing it? If there is any country in the world which has got so much of legislation, if there is any country in the world which has got so much of law, it is India. But every day we violate the law and legislation. For everything in the world we have a law in India. If there is a child labor law, Enormous amount of child labor is there in India. And some of you are thinking, bonded labor is abolished. I recently went to Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. After the severe economic crisis which the country is going through, several of the parents are sending children to farm labor. They are again becoming bonded labor. Some of us are thinking bonded labor is abolished in India. In the last 10-15 you know, years, you know, India has been going through severe economic crisis, particularly in the last Six years, there are no jobs, there are no growth, there are no employment. For 50 years in this country, we have not seen that kind of a scenario. In that kind of a context for me, it is important to know what should be the, the role of the media. The role of the media in a democracy is to spread the message of equality, equity and social justice. The constitution has given us, 191A of the Indian constitution, with the Supreme Court much, much earlier, in 50s itself, interpreted that freedom of speech and expression includes, you know, freedom of the media. When you are talking about the freedom of the media, what is this freedom is meant for? To give voice to the voiceless. To give to the voice to the voiceless. Millions of people in this country do not have voice. Look at, you know, agricultural labor. Look at, you know, the agrarian crisis in this country. Look at you know, the, the, the enormous amount of inequality which is there among you know, certain sections of people, whether it is Dalits, or Shadow class, or Shadow tribes, or Radhiwasis, or tribals, or the backward classes. Are we giving that kind of a that kind of a space? One of the major functions of the media, which Dr. B. Alan Baker said, is to give voice to the voiceless. Whose voice are we giving it? My dear friends, today 60 television.
education channels are owned by the biggest capitalist of this country, Mr. Ambani. Owns and controls. When you look at the you know, prime time media, when you look at you know, the major newspapers of this country, what are the concerns of this country? Poverty. But the problem the people that have said you know, live below the poverty line. Is poverty highlighted? What are the other people problems of this country? Unemployment? Joblessness? Are we getting any coverage in terms of unemployment and joblessness? Several of my students are doing PhD to find out the space and time coverage which is given in the media. It is getting further marginalized at one point of time. In 60s and 70s, there used to be certain amount of coverage relating to development issues called poverty, health, hygiene, nutrition, rural development, aggregation places. But when you look at you know, the media now, the space is getting further covered. So at one point of time, you know, what we worked on the role of the media was to set an agenda, set a people's agenda, set a democratic agenda, set a social justice agenda and a socialistic agenda. The media has completely forgotten, completely forgotten this agenda. That's where the issues of the country do not get highlighted. And we are also discussing at a point of time that in this country, the major institutions of this country, my dear friend, have collapsed. Parliament is not functioning the way it ought to be functioning. The kind of representatives who are there sitting in the Indian Parliament are not concerned about issues of this country. Major public policy documents in this country are not debated, are not discussed, including the budget. All of you know how budget is passed without much of a discussion. We have seen about what important legislations, whether it is the 370, whether it is citizen amendment bill, how they have been passed. They brought into the parliament around 11 o'clock by evening, voting is over. Where is the participation in so the major institutions called parliament is not functioning the way it ought to be functioning. And the other major institution is judiciary. We keep saying justice delayed is justice denied. The Washington Post wrote an editorial about four days ago. They are saying in this country to settle the present litigation which is pending, which will take 430 years. The present litigation which is pending in the High Court and the Supreme Court will take 430 years. I don't believe in second Janma. I don't believe in rebirth. Even if you believe in a rebirth, it will take four Janmas for you to settle the present litigation. And one of the biggest litigations of the world were Ayodhya litigation, which was pending in the Supreme Court for so many years. Ultimately, what did the judge say? I'm giving the judgment on the basis of faith, not on the basis of evidence. And now what we are seeing, one of the major litigations of this country now relating to CAA, which has been referred to the parliament, which has been referred to the Supreme Court. What is the Supreme Court Chief Justice saying? There's a lot of unrest outside. There's a lot of protest outside. I will not be taking up that litigation. So the major institution called in the law, the judiciary is also not functioning, the way it ought to be functioning. Ambedkar vision was, when he created this institution, when he created the three pillars of Indian democracy, where are the three pillars of Indian democracy functioning in the way they ought to be functioning? I don't want to talk much about the executive, which is one of the wings of democracy. Civil servants neither are civil nor servants. Every representative according to Ambedkar, whether it is a parliament member, whether it is a prime minister, whether it is a civil servant, is a public servant. People are masters. In fact, ideology growing, when you are talking about ideological journalism, the spirit, the constitutional ethics and constitutional morality, which you talked about, only needs to be implemented. Implemented. Someone has already made a reference about only the relationship between the both the state and the real estate. Today, many of them are in the business, industrialists, corporates, rich people. Big, big multinational companies today own ownership of the media. I have the data, unfortunately, they don't have the time to give. The leading newspapers, leading television channels, who are the people who own? What is their vested interest? If there's anything which is appealing in the media, the only vested interest columns, vested interest, viewpoints. In 1960s, which you know, 
Maybe to hold the guilty referred to. He talked about the facts of sacred interpretation of free. When you are supposed to be interpreting an opinion, you need to have a whole lot of historical understanding. Background relating to that particular issue. So what do we find when you read a newspaper? When, you, when I read early morning, when I read one newspaper, I get one version. When I read second newspaper, I get another version. When I read the third newspaper, I'm confused. I don't know what is the truth. We don't know what is the truth. The more and more you know, we read. So this is another unfortunate thing, you know, which is happening in that kind of a context. It's very important for me to talk about briefly. Briefly, what should be highlighted? When you look at, you know, I'm referring to the Government of India report. This is not my report. The Government of India report recently said, one of the major reports which has been, which has been published, this report came in 2018. Yeah, I will just take about you know, three minutes. They said, you know, there are several people who do not have an entry to temples. There are several people objection to sitting among the caste symbols in public places. Objection to entering caste houses. Objection to fetch water from public wells. We are thinking, you know, all these problems of, are on the decline. Looting, kidnapping, insult of Dal, uh, uh, Dalit women, torture, attempt to murder. These are all on the increase. Where is the media writing? Where is the media writing? What was Ambedkar's vision? What was Ambedkar's vision in terms of, you know, trying to highlight all this? So when we take, you know, several parameters of this country, lastly I'll take one minute. When we take the solar parameters of this country, when you look at the you know, Human Development Index, on what basis the you know, Human Development Index is decided? Number of people who are getting nutritious food, number of people who have access to health, number of people who have access to education, where does India stand? India is 130. Recently, one of the remarkable reports has come out, given by one of the leading magazines of the world, Economist, is that democracy is on the decline in this country. Democracy is in the decline. Democracy is the tradition. Democracy is the value. Is in the decline. People are not allowed to stage a protest. People are not allowed to take a rally. This is not my report. One of the major reports of this country. When you look at, you know, gender, gender inequality in this country, India stands 130 in terms of gender inequality in India. And then when you look at, you know, literacy in this country, India stands very, very low. When you are talking about Human Rights Index, India stands very, very low. Corruption Perception Index, India is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Do we cover these issues in the media? Do we cover these issues in the media? So, to sum it up, what is the role of the media? We have 130 crore population. Very soon, another 10 years ago, India is going to have the largest population in the world. We are already the largest democracy in the world. We are going to have largest population in the world. We are likely to overtake China. In another 10 years, we will have, you know, 140, 145 crore population in this country. This 145 crore population, their voice needs to be this reflected. Their agenda needs to be this reflected. What is democracy? Democracy means equality. Democracy means equal opportunity. Democracy means access. That is what is the meaning of the, that was the vision of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, to wind up, if only this country implements you know, what is there in the Indian constitution. If there is any holy book in this country, that is the only holy book, that is the Indian constitution, we the people of India. That we the people of India needs to be reflected day in and day out in the media. And again, if there is any country in the world where mass media is growing, it is only India which mass media is growing. There are over one lakh newspapers in this country. There are about 950 television channels in this country. Estimates are, in the next 10 years, India will have 2,000 television channels. The estimate social media is growing rapidly. I call Google a professor Google. I call WhatsApp at a WhatsApp university. That is the kind of social media growth. Radio is growing. FM radio has revolutionized communication in the country. India is the largest film producing country in the world. We produce 1,000 600 films. Every media is growing, but at the same time, there is a contradiction in India. There are more mobiles in India than toilets. That is the contradiction of this country. The role of the media is to resolve that contradiction.
to see that your schools run, to see that your, there are more better sanitation facilities. Look at the contradiction of this country. There are more temples in this country than schools. Not that I'm against temples. Schools also have to grow. Schools also have to grow. We, we need to have more and more schools and more and more universities. We have more and more schools and more and more universities. This kind of ideology will spread. People will debate. People will discuss. People will dissent. That is what Ron Baker said. Educate, unite and agitate. Educate millions and millions of these people about the conflict of this country. Millions and millions of the people have problems with this country. Then you know, we will get united and agitated. That is the only solution. We are a democracy. We are a vibrant democracy. And the democracy has to be retained. It will only be retained by the poorest of the poor people and educate them, enlighten them, so that you know, the democracy thrives. My dear friend, lastly, the whole world is looking to India. They are not looking anywhere else. Because we have got a huge, massive population in this country. Two multinational companies, founded by Microsoft or Google, is headed by Indians. Look at you know, our contribution with only 20% of them going to universities and colleges. If 100% of youth who know is the age group of 18 to 23, irrespective of religion, caste, or in schools and colleges and universities, we will be a major knowledge power. And that is the kind of a power we need to, we need to have. That is why I am happy in coming here and participating in this seminar, hoping that you know, we will become a major power when all of us get enlightened, educated, implement you know, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar philosophy and ideology and that is the role of the media. Thank you very much. Samantra Bharat TV ni subscribe chess kondi. Marini updates kosam pakanuna gantanokondi.